We are mad keen on growing veggies here at Gardening Australia and I know that so many of you are too. Every week I get to meet gardeners who are growing their own food and it could be in containers, in pots, in tubs, anything that will hold soil. It's all so inspiring. Today I'm in Sydney's northern beaches at a nursery with a focus on growing sustainably and I thought I'd get growing a few tasty crops that I reckon thrive in pots. Now your veggies aren't going to care what colour or style of pot they're growing in, but I care. So before you go out and buy new ones, think about how you can get your hands on some repurposed ones and reuse containers. There's all sorts of groups online. There's local community pages and of course, there's the street side cleanups. That is like an absolute treasure trove for pots and containers. Now, I've got these pre-loved pots here that have been waiting for someone to reimagine and take them to their new home. It's important that they get a good clean and any container you select has drainage holes. So this one is perfect and ready to go. Now, for growing most backyard veg in a container, you want to allow for around about the 10 to 15 litres of soil. So this container here, 300 mil, is kind of perfect for that. Now, this is the potting mix. It's the engine room for growing good veggies. So I start with a base of a premium potting mix and then I've added a couple of scoops of my own compost a scoop of cow manure, and then a scoop of my own worm castings. Mixed it all up, and that's ready to go into the container now. Veggies are feeders. They're gonna suck all of that goodness out and put it into the veg, which is what we want. Herbs are some of the best value crops for pots. Annual and biennial leafy herbs like parsley, coriander, and dill do well in a morning sun position by the back door. And perennials like thyme, oregano and chives, well, they'll just keep cropping for years. I've gathered a nice little collection of herbs here. The first one I'm going to put in is some of this dill. Dill's one of those really flavoursome greens that I love throwing in a salad, but equally I'll sneak a bit in a spinach pie too. So next up, Parsley. I love parsley. And finally, some coriander. I'll put a couple of these in. Hmm, delicious. While any lettuce will grow well in a pot, loose leaf varieties like oak leaf and red oak are my go to. With these ones, you harvest over many weeks, picking the outer leaves as new growth comes from the centre. Three is more than enough because they're going to fill it. Question is, will I go two red oak and one green or two green and one red? Hmm, two red. A simple tip is to sow a follow-up crop when the current crop is about half size. That way you'll never run out. Probably one of the most reliable crops in a pot is good old silver beet and I'm picking a couple of coloured varieties. Now these thrive in full sun, but they do okay in part shade as well. From a pot selection point of view, you want to go with something that's about 30 centimetres because they have quite long roots. In a pot like this, all you really need is one or two seedlings because they're going to grow up and fill this out quite quickly. You can also grow sweet potatoes in a pot with planted tubers producing long scrambling vines. The foliage is edible, great in a stir fry or as a steamed green. Homegrown tomatoes are a must eat in summer and most varieties do really well in containers. One thing to remember though is that they do require consistent moisture and nutrients. gone with a dwarf cherry variety called Tom Thumb and it's going into this pot which is a 400 millimetre 
pot, so there's plenty of soil in here. The tomatoes will get everything they need to thrive. But the thing with tomatoes is once they get to a certain height, they become quite unstable and fragile. So the best way to solve that is with a simple support structure. I've tied it together with some wire, and look at that. That'll provide perfect support for the tomatoes, and it's 100 millimetres square, which is enough to get your hands in and out and do anything you need. Now I'm backfilling with soil. The next step is to plant my little tommies and into planting with some sweet basil. Now, this simple structure is not just specific to tomatoes. You could use it to support zucchinis, cucumbers, even snow peas and beans. So it's really versatile. A little bit of mulch for my tomato basil pot and for all my crops in pots. A light layer of mulch helps to conserve soil moisture and prevent roots from drying out. A regular liquid feed will keep my crops happy and healthy. About every one to two weeks during the growing season is good. You've got to be attentive and consistent because this is really plant parenthood territory. Ideally, put them near the kitchen or the back door. You've got to keep up the water and the nutrients. And look, I'm a big fan of self-watering pots. They would serve this purpose really well and they're ideal if you travel a lot or just when life gets busy. So good luck with your little potted veggie patch, no matter how big or small. And send us pics to our socials because there's nothing we love more than seeing you and your growing success.